Today we learn to make redstone you can set your watch by. Hello and welcome to OMG Craft. I'm your host, OMG Chad. This is a show that'll teach you how to become a redstone expert in no time. Wait, Minecraft expert in no time. It's normally what I say. You guys have been sending me all sorts of emails and comments asking me, when will I get to a redstone tutorial? You guys want to learn more about redstone. So here we are. We're going to learn about how to make a few different types of redstone clocks. No, I'm not talking about that clock that is in the game of Minecraft. Uh, that you could just craft in a crafting table. No, we're going to get into how to make things that will send off a redstone pulse pretty reliably so that you can set something up like a dispenser or maybe a dropper and use it in your creations. Let's jump in. So first I wanted to show off the simplest form of a clock that I could think of in Minecraft, and this is definitely it. I've, uh, I've slowed it down with this <laughs> lever. I've turned it off, basically. So if I break this lever, you can see that it starts to work. And I'm using this dispenser as sort of an idea of how fast this clock goes. So a pretty simple design, and all that it uses is these torches. Uh, it doesn't even use repeaters, because when, when I first saw this clock, repeaters didn't even exist. Um, basically, it's using the fact that you can use another torch to invert the signal or turn on and off these torches. And if you're confused by any of these concepts, please go back and watch my redstone tutorial uh, where I just cover all the basics of redstone. So if you're confused, like, why is this even working at all? Uh, go watch that tutorial. Uh, but it, you, so you, all you need is an, uh, an odd number of redstone torches and it will constantly turn itself on and off. And a, a neat little feature, as you saw before, is as long as you power it somewhere, it will turn itself off. So if I was to power it here, it would also turn off. If I was to power it here, it would turn itself off, uh, which is kind of, I can even power it here and it turns itself off, which is kind of a nice little feature of this clock. And let's go ahead and power it and go move on to the next clock. Now, that one's pretty slow. It certainly did pick up a lot of arrows. Oh, that sounds amazing. Um, so it did certainly pick up a lot of, or shoot out a lot of arrows. Uh, but this one works a lot faster. Now, in order to turn it on, I need to basically place a torch and destroy a torch as fast as I can. So we're going to try this. Nope, see, it wasn't even fast enough. I may not be able to do this with a... Uh, with a trackpad, which uh, I have. There we go, was able to do it. And so you can see how much faster this one works. And that's because it's working at one tick. Uh, so one tick is on, one tick is off. And how uh, dispensers work nowadays is it needs a full on off cycle. So basically every two ticks, so it'll shoot out 10 arrows every second. Now this one has a disadvantage in that it really can't be turned on and off easily. If I flip the lever, it's gonna turn it off, but when I turn it off, like turn it on or turn it off, it just doesn't work because it is really delicate. It's a really delicate setup uh, in that you kinda of have to set it up manually and then it just goes on forever. A nice thing is that it's silent. Both of these are silent. We'll show you one later, which is a lot more configure, but it, f configurable, but it is uh, kinda of loud. Uh, there is, let's just do this again because it's so cool. Oh, I love doing that. Um, there's another one. Anyway, we'll get to it then. Here's another one. And this is very similar to the one I just showed you. But you, just to show you, you can add uh, extra time to something like this. Whoops. Yeah, oh, man. Let's, let's put it right here. There we go. And so this one will just add a little bit extra time. You can delay this slightly. But if you go too far, it will just break because the, the delay is so long it'll just break. Once again this one has the disadvantage of this one in that you cannot easily turn it on and off. So let me show you this guy. Much more compact than even the first one I showed you. Um, and so and it, it's all, uh, you're able to turn it on and off. So here it's going. Uh, to make this it's very simple. You're seeing that. This is on a two tick delay. If you were to put this on a one tick delay it will burn out eventually and you need to update all the blocks around it in order for it to work. So me just putting down something like right here should work. There you go. So now that it is on uh, that two tick delay, it will not break. Like I said, you can easily turn this one on and off with some redstone. 
uh, as long as you just interrupt this cycle. It is nice that as long as uh, there isn't in something interrupting, the cycle will continue because this torch kind of powers the whole cycle from the very beginning by turning on and causing a loop. Turn that one off. Now this next one is my favorite, although it is not exactly practical. And this one is by the far the fastest clock I've ever seen and it is dead simple. This is a comparator uh, in its on state. It has two states. When you first put down a, whoops, when you first put down a comparator, just like this, it's in this state and if you right click it, it the torch will light up. That's the state we need it in, so we'll light up that torch there. And as long as you're putting power in the back, woohoo, look at it go! Isn't this crazy fun? Now on some single player worlds, this will be too fast. The ticks will go in so fast that it will not work at all. Uh, it maybe will work the first time, but then basically this will not be able to update fast enough. So uh, it's also a little bit delicate, although it doesn't seem like it should be. Really cool, really simple, and really compact. So next, let's move on to something that is probably a little bit more useful, and I'll show you how to build this one because it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, this one is also toggable on and off really easily. It's not quite so delicate. And you can set the delay of the time that this one uses. So if I look inside of here, if you don't know how item hoppers work, which we did cover in uh, the last tip, if you put them together like this, where you hold down shift and make sure that they're both pointing into each other, and you open up their inventory and drop something in, they're actually going to transfer back and forth. You can see that this is actually happening, we could basically just put one piece, and you can see that it's happening, they're going just back and forth. The one hopper is pushing into the other while the other hopper pushes it back. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Now you could sort of use this information a little bit here if we uh, actually uh, poke this out, you can see that the, the comparator is realizing that there's an item and then there's not an item, but uh, you can also use this to, and that's, that works just, just fine. It takes a few more ticks uh, to make sure that happens. Uh, but we can also use that to create a little bit more redstone around it. The first person I saw do this was, was Etho, um, and so you can put even more items in. Last episode, we uh, two episodes ago, we learned that if you power a hopper, uh, it will not do anything. So this one has been powered, so it's not going to try to put its items back into the other one. Uh, I have it all turned off with this lever right here, and if I break this lever, it will unpower this so that the, uh, the piston will move back. And so let's go ahead and do that now. So the piston moves back. The items will uh, now fill into this hopper and it's being powered by the redstone, so it's not gonna do anything until all the items come out of the other hopper, which means that the comparator turns off, which means that it will push the items over. So basically, the layman's terms is that if you put more items into this, it will take the hoppers longer to unload all of the items, causing you to have a much, much longer time to wait for the redstone to move back over. And so you can use this uh, pretty simply by you know, doing an on-off state, just like this, where you're only using uh, one piece of redstone, and there you go, now it's on, and you could use that however. There's another way that you could do it, let me just go ahead and destroy this. Another way you can use this, and that there's kind of this half tick uh, when the when the block is moving from one side to the other. Hopefully that'll happen. I don't know how long um, I, put, I put a lot of uh, items in there. Um, but basically, when the block is moving from one redstone to the other, there you go, it will turn off. So you can see, let me remove a whole bunch of items. There we go. It's much easier. You can see that there will be a pulse every time that happens. And so you could use this pulse to your advantage if you wanted to. You can also kind of make sure that this is uh, almost sterilized by putting down a repeater and then the repeater will act as the way of making sure that that uh, gets through. Because it is a half tick sometimes and it's a full tick the next time as the game catches up. Um, so this repeater will keep that in check. You just saw that it just moved, but this line didn't change 
Now it did, and the next time that it goes over, I don't think that this line will turn off. Keep, keep an eye on it. Well, it did that time. So anyway, you can, you can use that to your advantage as well. It also has the nice feature, as I mentioned before, that it can be turned on and off just by powering it. So now that it, this is powered, it's, it will move over once and then just stay there uh, because this will always stay powered now. Uh, kind of a really nice feature as well. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to do a little bit of redstone stuff. Yes, I did tame this ocelot and make it into a cat. It's the studio cat, Waffles. How you doing, Waffles? She really loves my computer. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and subscribe at youtube.com slash omgcraft for more. You can comment below or give this video a like if you liked it or send me your feedback, suggestions, or questions at mail at omgcraft.com. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.